Last year, I uploaded a video which talked about various methods to control LEGO Train Switch tracks remotely. While many of the ideas presented are still relevant and won't be covered in this video, I've learned a lot since then and wanted to share my findings. First off, I'm using a new design to motorize the switch tracks. The two methods in my previous video worked most of the time, but I did find a few issues with them. The 9 volt method, which used clutch gears, was very temperamental. Some clutch gears worked better than others, but often the gear would just slip without switching the track. The power functions method worked well enough with the official LEGO motors, but I often used cheap third-party replacements from eBay, which did not work well. Official Power Functions m size motors haven't been sold by the LEGO Group for many years, and they start at about $20 used online. This can get very expensive if you want to motorize many switch tracks at once. Cheap replacement motors can be sourced for as little as $4 each, including shipping. They aren't great for many applications such as GBC or RC vehicles, but they work fine in this case. Not long after that first video, I uploaded a short tutorial for the Brick Automation Project software. In addition to the substantial software update programmed by Tom Cook of the L-Gage website, he also designed a solution for motorized to switch tracks using the Powered Up system. This design proved to be very reliable. My only complaint was that it was kind of a pain to borrow motors from once they were built. So I set about making my own version. I've included links in the description for instructions to build a version for each switch track direction. This design can also be mirrored to help with short cable lengths. This was my first experience making my own instructions, but I think they turned out okay. With this design, it's easy to pull the motors and use them elsewhere. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know I'm all over the place with different projects. This was a huge win for me. This new design also opened up a few new options when choosing motors. Without modification, they are compatible with the Power Functions M and L size motors, as well as the Wido 2.0, Powered Up L size, and Boost motors. Although the Boost motor is one plate too high, but it isn't much of an issue, especially on carpet. I'll briefly cover controlling the switch tracks with the Brick Automation Project first, since this is the only solution that works with parts available directly from LEGO. Although it does seem the WeDo 2.0 motor, also known as the simple linear motor, has been discontinued. At the time of writing this video, it is still available through LEGO Education, but is marked as retiring soon. I already have a video on getting started with the Brick Automation Project, controlling trains, and tips for choosing the best Bluetooth radios, so I won't cover any of that here. We're just going to connect any power to pub and change the outputs to standard switch. That's all that's needed for the motor shown here. Clicking the left or right button will change the direction of the track. We can even use a powered up sensor to control the tracks. I plan to cover this in more detail in a future video. The two main shortcomings of the powered up system are the heavy reliance on batteries as well as the short length of the attached cables. Third party extensions are available online, but they are quite expensive for what they are. The LEGO Group has never provided a solution to this problem. Now for my favorite solution, the Power Functions system. Or more accurately, the combination of the Power Functions and 9V system. The main advantages here are being able to stack cables together, official extension wires, and the custom options available. Anytime I mention controlling an individual switch, Remember you can stack the cables and control two or more switches as a group. If a pair of switches are out of sync, you can use the power function switch to reverse the polarity on one of the motors. I've made tutorials for repairing and making custom linked 9 volt and power functions cables. They will be linked in the description. A quick note, you could use this motorized switch track design with custom electronics, either making your own switchboard or with a microcontroller such as an Arduino. While I do think these solutions are cool, I tend to use mostly LEGO solutions. You'd be surprised what's possible if you have a knowledge of all the electronic options LEGO has produced over the last few decades. Using elements from the 9V system allows us to power our switching solution partially or entirely from mains power. 
A solution I like to use, which I realize is certainly not for everyone, is using the old LEGO Dactus Serial interface from the early 90s. The official software allows you to create a custom control panel with switches, which can be used to control the eight outputs. Make a few 9 volt to power function adapters, and you're good to go. I wish these interfaces were more widely available. I've seen custom software that allowed using four serial interfaces at once. I can only imagine a dedicated piece of software where you could map out a train layout and control 32 switch tracks individually. Another option is using the Power Functions IR system. It can be run from mains power using a LEGO 9V train regulator and a custom cable, or an empty battery box. I'm powering mine for my DACTA control lab. If you are using the Powered Up system to control your trains, you'll have four available IR channels, which lets you control up to eight individual outputs. If you control the power to the IR receivers, you can turn them off, freeing up that channel and allowing for more outputs. This is covered in more depth in my previous video. Another simple solution is to use the power function switch or the old 9 volt pole reverser switches. Just remember, unless the switch returns to the center position, the motor will stall and heat up. Especially cheap replacement motors, which often lack protection. So I think that's it. Again, there will be an absolute phone book of a description to this video with links to other tutorials I've made, instructions to build these motorized switch tracks yourself, and credit to all the fans of LEGO that helped for this video to be possible. I have more train videos in the works, as well as many other projects that use LEGO electronics to their fullest potential. If that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching, and remember to play well. He's not a real fan if he doesn't have an Apple II.